the problem with ham fest is you don't know if shit works. Sometimes when you pay a certain price, you expect it to be working, and then there's another price you pay when you expect to do a little bit of work to it, so. Boy, it seems like everything's broken, man. So this amplifier I bought um, doesn't work. <laughs> and somebody had already been in it, uh, removed the covers for the um, relays and stuff. So anyway, um, I have to get to the bottom side of it. This relay is no good. <clears throat> Coil is no uh, is open uh, connectivity. So I had to use the heat gun to remove the label, the Lexan on the front. Good thing I saved it um, to get at these screws. Otherwise I would have had to um, undo a lot of unsoldering. I guess I could have unsoldered from the, I could have unsoldered, I guess. Let me put this light on. Um, but I think I'm gonna undo these screws here and just let the switches go with it so I can test it and stuff. Um, I have to take the uh, connectors out. I might, I, I don't know, they're in okay condition. Um, this is the problem though. Um, one of these transistors, yeah, this driver. Look, the, there's two transistors holding these, like this one here. See how you get two transistors? So there's one here and then there's one underneath there. So I wanted to remove that as well. I have a big Mongo soldering iron uh, to remove that. Um, trick that I use is do not remove the solder with a solder sucker first just heat it and lift it uh, i found that a lot easier that way and uh yeah so i gotta undo all these screws and um i'll clean off the solder paste i'll put new solder paste underneath there um, so this is gone i think the tr transistor that drives it might be out as well i'm, I'm hoping that these um transistors are still good they're motorola's which are pretty cool because um, you can't get that no more. So, yeah, we'll see uh, see how this goes. These um, caps were heated. I, you know, they're heated. I don't think they're blown, though. You know, I don't think they're blown. I might just order, because I'm going to order this relay from RF Parts. I might order some new caps and just recap it while I'm here. Yeah, um, so maybe like $30, $40 worth of parts. I'll have this thing working again. Um, but yeah, it's just not something I was planning on doing. <laughs> All right, so I'll, I'll keep you informed. Oh, I got a schematic here. Keep you informed on how things are going here. Hopefully this light is not too bright. Oops. So uh, yeah, there's my project, yeah. And, and it's funny because I was just talking about sometimes you buy something you just don't know. But I didn't take down this guy's name, call sign, or anything as I bought this thing. Which was shame on me. Alright, anyway, here you go. That's what happens. Alright, later. Alright guys, I'm back. <clears throat> as you can see, I had to remove the unit from the heat sink. Um, it was just that this being where see this cap right there I had one right over that which is where the screw is that I had to get out because of that one little thing it was kind of a pain that was these things are real difficult to get out um, but anyway everything else was fine uh, not a problem and you can see like I don't know the, why is there flux coming anyway up? Um, so yeah so there's the uh, the relay I actually got the relay out in one piece sometimes something like that you end up uh just cutting it taking it apart in sections but i did get the whole thing out in one piece it was uh kind of kind of messed up uh, yeah got an or got that on order um this relay is fine i'm going to uh yeah i'm going to redo the caps not a big deal and uh yeah we should be good hopefully these transistors are fine if this one's blown which is the driver if that one's blown <coughs> i actually have one of those but i'm not going to replace it i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to jump it and i'm going to bypass it out because i really don't need that driver 
Um, I guess I, I could. This so this unit is 10 watts in, gives me 160 watts out. Now, if you run 10 watts into this thing and you use it on FM, right? So it's like full duty cycle. It's gonna get hot as a mofo. So generally speaking, um, you know, I, I don't. I use the amps for sideband, right? So it's kind of. I'd be running like five, five watts typically, five, maybe peaking a ten on this thing. But I thought about just using this in my car. I've got a handheld that I keep in the car. I'll just plug that in using the remote. See, it came with the remote head. Here's the remote head for it. And what I'll do is I'll just have that so I can switch it on. So my little five watt handheld will give me. Uh, since it's 10 watts in, it's 160 watts out. So 5 watts in, it's probably going to be closer to 65 watts, which would be good. 65, 70 watts. And make it like a high power mobile. Thing won't get all that hot. It'll be just fine. Last forever. So that was my plan. Um, yeah. And uh, I saw another amp on, online for sale, a Tokyo High Power. I really like Tokyo High Powers. So I ordered that. The guy said the preamp was out on it. So I ordered the part for the preamp before I even have the unit. <coughs> I'm actually going to have the part to repair the Tokyo High Power before I even have the Tokyo High Power. He charged me $28 shipping on eBay. And it's going to take a week to get here. It's like, what the heck? And now eBay is no fun because you got to pay sales tax too. And if you sell something, you got to pay tax. It's like ridiculous. It was like... It was $250, uh, $270, and it's like $50 of tax and shipping. I was like, oh, man. But these amps are going for a lot of money now. I think I'm just going to start buying. Every time I see these um, two-meter amps, I'm just going to try and buy them, assuming that they're broken price. I'll give them the broken price, and I'll just fix them up because these things are going for big money. A brand-new 160-watt unit um, are going like $600. It's crazy. It's crazy talking with somebody else about it that we think that the sh part shortages people are taking advantage of it but amplifiers are going crazy high and um, parts are still available but it's getting a little more difficult to get them so anyway that's where i'm at right now um waiting on parts they should be here i ordered them second day air they've already shipped uh san marcos california I should have them tomorrow i'll uh, solder this up clean this board up and i'll be good to go so thanks for watching and I'll uh, show you the process as we move along on this on this uh, amplifier Talk to you. Oh, let me show you the front Gotta be careful with this. I don't want to damage it So you can see some scrape marks there because it pulled a little bit of the pain off but uh, Where I go to attach it to it's it's still there so Hopefully it won't be too bad when I put it back together. It'll, you'll be able to tell I pulled it off, I'm sure. But uh, unless I can get another one of these labels, that would be cool. All right, see you in a little bit. I love this. You get on 70, uh, 40 meters, 7 megahertz, and you get these round tables. And you get all these people, so... So... So this guy's uh, in Toronto, Doug in Toronto, Dave, um, where's Dave at? Uh, he's in uh, New Hampshire. Uh, John is in um, Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, RKL, he's uh, Randall, he's up there in West Virginia. And this is great. We just got a, like a little round table going and uh, just shoot the breeze about uh, whatever you want to talk about. And, and that's what's so much fun about ham radio. 40 meters. This is 40 meters at its best. And nobody's running any amplifier. Everybody's running just 100 watts right now. So, yeah, pretty cool. All right, so I got my parts in from RF Parts. These guys are great. Um, and there's the relay. I checked to see if I could get the other relay. No. I did measure the ohms across the coil. It's uh, about 150 ohms. So I don't know if that's good or bad. Um, I might test it and just test the contacts by applying voltage to it. But anyway, here's my caps. I'm going to replace the caps. There's no big deal to change them out. And uh, that's a driver transistor. 
case the driver that drives the uh, relays is blown. Um, this is the received preamp. It's a gas fat preamp. Anyway, uh, yeah, so here's the amp. Uh, I think I'll start off with the relay and uh, start moving on this thing. All right, so I um, got this thing here on my test bench, messy bench. Anyway, I hooked it up to this rig, um, and this will run VHF, but I just put it on HF because I wanted to see if there was a big difference between, you know, connecting through. I wasn't getting through from the, you know, from the radio to the uh, antenna on here. It has to go through that relay. So I replaced the relay. Sure enough, now it connects through, which is great. I even tried the uh, receive preamp. I tried it on HF. Works on HF, uh, about three S units difference, three and a half S units. So that's good too. Now um, I could effectively just put this thing back together. Um, thinking though, since I got the capacitors, um, I might as well change these caps out. They look a little heated. What's your thoughts? Um, maybe I shouldn't even worry about it, but figured it's a pain in the butt getting to the other side of this thing. Um, so maybe I should like some of these are pretty brown. So I'm going to go ahead and change these caps. I think since I got the board out and uh, make it look brand new. Um, it really sucks on this though. I, uh, this relay can go in either way. I knew which way it had to go in and I couldn't quite align it. So I said, well, let me just see the other way. <laughs> I was like, oh crap, it goes in the other way easier, right? And then I wasn't even thinking, I just started soldering. So I soldered it in the wrong way. And then, this, you know, had to remove it. And removing these things with, you got eight pins. I overheated the land. And of course, I damaged a couple lands. You can see the little loop right there. So, but, so I, this time when I soldered it, put a lot of flux in there so it would flow down the lead. And it seems like I got connectivity. I don't know how good of a connection I got. It really kind of sucks that I had to do it. But you can only, you know, really when I removed this the first time, I should have destroyed it. I should have just cut it so that I pull out one pin at a time. But I didn't. So, uh, yeah, that board got a real workout with that relay. Uh, so, anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm moving on here. I'm moving on. All right, I'm putting these screws in here in the front. Um connected up the uh, antenna connectors all my screws are a little bit loose because <clears throat> I have to pull this thing back out again had to uh, unsolder those um, to screw that down and then put this thing back in so um, yeah fresh uh, they call it pigeon poop uh, thermal joint compound on all my transistors I'm not like most people and overdo it um, got to clean off some of the flux off of this board uh, that's not from me <laughs> and uh, anyway ready to give it a test um, <laughs> all right as you can see I got it back together uh, when I put the the label back on I used a rubber cement and I didn't realize it was going to dissolve the, uh, the ink a little bit on this uh, laminate so it's a little dirty faced but she's back together wow does it work man what this thing will do so uh, I'm gonna key up, it's on the 20 watt scale, doing about three watts. So I've got this thing on low power, right? Low, 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 low power. So about three watts. I'm gonna put it on the uh, 200 watt scale now. Oh, and before I do that, let me show the SWR. SWR, forward. Reverse, pretty good. Since I'm here right now, um, let me show the input SWR because I'm showing the SWR, right? So, with the amp on, so forward. See, so good SWR. That's one thing you want to check. You want to check the what I call the input SWR, the radio into the amp. Make sure that SWR does not go high when this amp is turned on. Uh, well, you can check it both with it off and with it on. So now I'm gonna move this meter behind the amp so we can measure the power of the amp. Stand by. All right, all right, all right. So everything should be good again. We'll go back to power, 20 watts, forward. Oops. Let's see. Power. So far, no luck. It comes up par partially works. I can't get the whole thing to work. Oops, there's one. 
frequency. Sorry, guys. I bumped the VFO on this thing. All right, five two. All right, so there we go. Power two hundred watt forward. All right, so there we go. Barefoot into the amp. 200 watt scale, switch it on, key up, and so three and a half watts give me 75 out, so uh, yeah, that's pretty good, um, so let's see, I'll change the power, I think it's this button, medium power, let's see how much medium power is, uh, let's see, 10 watt scale, 20 watt scale, sorry. All right, <clears throat> I had technical difficulties here with this cable. I'm just gonna have to hold it real steady. So there's high power. So that's uh, six watts. Uh, I was on the 20 watt scale, so now I'm gonna go to the high power. Six watts, see. Put the amp on, key up. Look at that baby, 130 watts, 140 watts. That was just with a chintzy little jumper wire too. I don't have heavy wire on here. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, look at that, 150 watts out. Turn the amp off, it's about seven watts in. So yeah, that should work out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. And I've been working on the Tokyo High Power. So uh, yeah, next video I'll have something on that. All right, see you, see you in a little bit. Oh, and. Uh, Good Guys Car Event, Good Guys Car Show coming up uh, tomorrow, so I'm going to try to head down there. I might try to do a live stream. All right, later.